about to call this meeting to order. John, would you deliver the invocation, please? Dear Lord, please help guide this council to make the best decisions for the citizens of Jasper, be with our firemen, our police, and our city workers as they go throughout the week, and keep them safe and healthy, be with their families, be with our troops that's overseas, and most of all, help lead and guide us so we can make the best decisions possible. Amen. 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 To the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Council, on your agenda, They have a new copy, do they not, Lisa? Yes, they have a new one. Oh, your old, what you received probably Friday did not have the parole property under old business, and it didn't have F and G, Woodbridge Repair Bid and Lease Resolution, Lisa Hoyle. The F and G, we didn't have a motion to adopt this agenda as you have it tonight. We accept the agenda as uh, distributed. Motion? Second. Motion second discussion. Being none, I'll favor what we show hand. Thank you, Council. <laughs> Minutes of the July 10, 2017 regular meeting. Lisa? May we recall the meeting to order promptly at 6 p.m.? He requested Council Member John Faust give the invitation. Council Member Jim Lane led the recital of the Pledge of Allegiance. Mayor Weaver asked that the agenda be reviewed and approved by Council. Councilmember Jim Lane made a motion to approve the agenda. Councilmember John Fowle seconded the motion. Motion carried unanimously. Mayor Weaver stated to let it be noted that Councilmember Lance Snavy and Tony Fountain were absent from this meeting. City Clerk Lisa Hall read the minutes of the June 5, 2017 regular meeting. Councilmember Jim, Jim Looney made a motion to adopt the minutes as read. Councilmember Sonny Clark seconded the motion. Motion carried unanimously. Item A of the old business, Mayor Weaver recognized Sonny Underwood, planning and zoning director, to present an alcohol license application to council for approval. He informed council that Salmini D. Ravula, the owner of Dunn's North Convenience Store, located at 170 Antioch Church Road, had completed the application process and the required advertising had been met. The owner is now requesting that the application for a license to sell alcohol, beer, and wine by the package be approved. Council Member Jim Luna made a motion to approve the license. Council Member Sonny Parker seconded the motion. Motion carried unanimously. <coughs> Item B under old business. Mayor Weaver recognized David Buchanan and Donnie Fowler from the fleet department to present to Council the need for the purchase of a skid steer. Mr. Buchanan had obtained two quotes. Mason Tractor revised their quote since last council meeting to $62,420 and Nelson, Nelson Tractor quote of $60,611 still stands. Finance Director Lisa Hoyle stated that this purchase would be financed as part of the GMA lease finance, financing agreement that will also finance the other capital purchases of vehicles and equipment budget for 2017. She stated that the city would receive a special financing rate of 2.4% for this capital lease. Discussion followed. Mayor Weaver entertained a motion. Council Member Jim Looney made a motion to approve the purchase of the skid steer for the low bid of 60611 from Nelson Tractor with the understanding that when the city does the budget next year, council demands that a greater portion of the cost of health insurance be put on the employees of the city. Council Member Sonny Proctor seconded the motion. Motion passed by a vote of two to one. Council Member John Faust voted against. Item C under old business. Mayor Weaver recognized Water and Sewer Department, Water and Sewer Superintendent David Hall. Mr. Hall stated that since the city had determined that Marble Hill well was not considered feasible, he is requesting that the 25000 approved for testing that well be designated to do a water test at Whitestone. Mayor Weaver entertained a motion. Council Member Jim Looney made a motion to move the water test from Marble Hill to Whitestone. <coughs> Council Member John Faust seconded the motion. Motion carried unanimously. Item A under new business, Mayor Weaver stated that the city needed to appoint two people to serve on the Pickens County Library Board. He stated that it was his recommendation that Ann Roper and Bobby Edge be appointed to the board. Council Member Jim Looney made a motion to approve the mayor's recommendations and Council Member Sonny Proctor seconded the motion. Motion carried unanimously. Item B under new business, Mayor Weaver recognized Amelia McIntyre and Larry Wilson with the Pickens Arts and Cultural Alliance. Ms. McIntyre stated that she would like to approach the Georgia 
Department of Transportation about adding brown recreation destination signs with picnic tables graphics for the city. She stated that she was asking council's permission to move forward with this request. Mayor Weaver entertained a motion. Councilmember Jim Lena made a motion to allow Ms. McIntyre to move forward with the destination signs. Councilmember John Powell seconded the motion. The motion carried unanimously. Ms. McIntyre stated that the Pickens Arts and Culture Alliance is requesting use of Roper Row property downtown to hold an art event August 12th at the second Saturday each month afterward through November from 11 to 4 p.m. Mayor Weaver entertained a motion. Councilmember Jim Lane made a motion to allow the Alliance to use the property for arts events for the second Saturday each month through November. Mm -hmm. Councilmember Sonny Proctor seconded the motion. Motion passed unanimously. Councilmember Jim Lee made a recommendation that a committee be formed to determine the future of the Roper Perot property on Spring Street. Mayor Weaver stated that this would be addressed at the next regular council meeting. Item C under a new business. Mayor Weaver recognized David Buchanan and Donnie Fowles and the Fleet Department to present to council the need for the purchase of a sanitation truck. Mr. Buchanan had obtained two quotes, the lowest being $135,000. Discussion followed, no action taken. Economic developer Jerry Nickerhall gave a report to the City Finance Director Lisa Boyle gave the financial report for the month of June 2017. Lonnie Waters gave the animal control report for the month of June 2017. Chief Greg Lovell gave a report of police activities for the month of June 2017. Chief Steve Roper gave a report of fire activities for the month of June 2017. Council Member John Fowles gave an update on JYSA activities. Being no other business to come before Council, Council Member Jim Lee made a motion to adjourn the meeting. Council is scheduled to convene next at the regular council meeting to be held August 7, 2017. You have a motion. You want to hear. Make a motion to accept the minutes of red. Motion to approve as read. I'll <clears throat> make the second, but I want some discussion. I got a second with discussion. The uh, first paragraph on the second page, Lisa. My, I mean, what I'm remembering is the discussion on greater portion of health care was not that the council demanded a greater portion of the health care be put upon the employees, but there is a possibility that uh, yes. we wouldn't have as much money to put into health insurance. I, I, I just quoted exactly what you said, but I'll, I'll do, well, my, do whatever y'all want to, to do. My intent was to, to say that it may be. Uh, I'm not, I did not mean to say the council, I, I'm one member of council, I can't have five votes. So I can't say that we will increase the cost of health insurance to the employees. Why, why don't we take after after this meeting after the after we approve the minutes as read let Jim clarify his statement in this meeting as to what you intended uh, when we were in that debate about the you know look, would that not be a best way to clear it up because that was done and if you if you have a question specifically as to the wording uh, we can review that, but she does have. I have, I have no problem. With okay, it. but if you want to clarify the statement because you're concerned the way it came across, I think that'd be appropriate, and we can put that in the minutes. That, and we'll do that as soon as we finish with the with the minutes. You've got a motion to second. Any further discussion? Being all in favor, of your hands. Thank you. And continuation of that uh, request for Mr. Looney, Councilman Looney. Uh, clarify it again, Jim, for the record. Well, the sentence as it is now says, uh, with the understanding that when the city does the budget next year, council demand that a greater portion of the health cost, the cost of health care insurance be put to the employees of the city. Uh, I have one vote. I do not mean to say that, uh, that, we, that I had demanded uh, that they increase it. I said there was a meant to say there was a possibility. Okay. Uh, and as one vote, I can't demand anything except my, my one vote. Good clarification. For the record. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Uh, <clears throat> first item on old business. 
Uh, we got parole property committee. And Jim, I'll recognize you again. Uh, the last meeting, most of the motions were made by you, and most of this meeting is going to be about you. <laughs> uh, Jim, we, we, during our work session, uh, I asked you if you would choose your committee member as well as any appointee that you would like to make. Uh, my understanding was that you were going to announce that I would, uh, you were going to let me appoint the committee, I and I will do that at the next meeting. Okay. I'll talk by every opportunity. To talk. Okay, so you want to uh, table this until the next meeting? Uh, I'll just announce it at the next meeting. It will be. Well, I will. I'll still be part of the business record, so we'll be over the old business next meeting. Okay. Under new business, downtown event. We have with us tonight Mr. Paul Ford with the Jasper uh, Merchant Association. Jasper Merchant Association. How about you, Bill Alliance? Jasper <laughs> Merchant Association. Paul, welcome. Thank you for having me. Um, let me hand out a couple of these. Um, this is an example of the flyer um, for the event that we're planning. I got five or six of them. Look at it. I got five or six of them. You can look at The Jasper Merchants Association. Um, in years past have done the Main Street Mania, um, which is where we do the music um, at several different bands playing. And then we also do like a car cruise in at the same time. Um, and also have like other vendors come and set up and we bring people to town and hopefully get them to shop in the stores. We've been talking to uh, two groups. One of them's called the Georgia Z Club and the other one's called the Fair Lady Alliance of Atlanta. They are both very huge uh, car clubs for the Nissan Z cars which are the sports cars, dating from 1969 to now. The, and they are wanting to come to Jasper and be a part of a big event with us. And they have guaranteed that they will bring at least a minimum of 70 of their members' cars and be a part of our downtown, uh, part of the cruise end. And then I've talked with uh, Jeff from Mountain City uh, Auto Parts, um, and they are going to sponsor the music for that event. Um, we have four musicians already signed up to do it. These are the only two of these off. You guys pass these around. Um, for that event, and so what we want to do is close Main Street down uh, from 4 to 8 um, and have the car crews in. Anybody that has any kind of car can come out and join us. <clears throat> and then have the stage in front of the uh, County Courthouse, like we've done before, and then have the band of musicians playing all night long. Um, and then we're going to have the, uh, the groups that are coming in said that they will be doing dinner um, at the local restaurants here. Um, they, they will go off and either go to the Woodbridge or to the 61 Main, and they will have dinner there. And then after that, our main idea um, with this group is that we've got motel rooms at the Woodbridge, and we're going to get motel rooms at the uh, Mark Italian, someone will be staying overnight. And then on Sunday, we're going to do a wine tasting tour of Sharp Mountain Vineyards and Fading Goat. And we're going to all meet at the Jasper Jeep, and then we'll take them to Sharp Mountain on Sunday, and then from there for about three hours after the tour, we're going to take them over to Fading Goat. And then from there, we'll spend about three hours. And then from that, we're either going to go to uh, Rocco's and then the day and have dinner there. So this group is looking at Jasper as a possible thing for their national convention, which is in 2018, in October. And we're trying to show them how Jasper is a good place for them to come and spend money and visit our shops and enjoy our downtown and what Pickens has to offer. So that's what this event basically is about, is to show them that we can be hospitable and that we can handle a group as large as them. Um, and if we do impress them enough, they're going to make Jasper a one-day event of their week national convention in the next year, 2018. Where they'll come to Jasper and Pickens County and do a day's event here and spend money here. And that brings probably about 15,000 cars. So, and this is from all over the United States that will be coming here. So it's a huge event. We call that a deep day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, but, it's, but, this, but these guys here will be... Um, we're probably looking at maybe doing like a scavenger hunt for them. Questions, council? Any questions? Any 
Christians on Main Street. Or? But it's, but this would be a it's a good event for our, our merchants on Main Street. I I, I have a question to get the council geared up is who are your volunteers by name? Uh, the Jasper Merchants Association. There'll be several of our members. I've got Krista Kelly, um, our president, which will be Hayden Bushi. Our uh, vice president, Kirk Rathfield, will be part of this. They'll help us out doing it. Um, what about the Chamber of Commerce? Are they involved at all? No, we're not a part of the Chamber at all. Um, we're basically even the Chamber and us are kind of like the same thing. We're both business league um, nonprofits, but we do the. We're more geared to bringing family fun, free family events. Mm -hmm to the city of Jasper and Pickens County so that people here can come and see what their business uh, businesses offer. Then that may come back to the concern for volunteers. The chamber is here around volunteerism as well as your right. thought, but this is the first time you put this event on. No, this, this, this event. Well, we've done the like mainstream mania. We, we've done the mainstream manias. We used to be the ones that run the car shows until all the merchants started complaining about the old car show people never going into the stores. So, so we stopped doing it because of that. Okay. Uh, the old course. Right. Okay. So, so you're telling us tonight that you can have 70 cars, at least minimum 70 cars. Correct. And they are November the 4th. Correct. You know, November 4th is getting kind of cold, probably right. rainy. Average. And they don't get those old cars out there in those. Well, these, these guys, uh, well, that's, that's that group. These guys here have like the newer sports cars. They're the Nissan Zs, you know, the 240s, the 260s. Okay, who, the who, are you, who are you speaking with as far as they're concerned? Uh, their chapter president, um, Kevin. Can, can you, got, you got any documentation that um, I have emails on? that we've been talking about? If you can get me that, I'm sure the council would like to see that down the road. Yeah. Mr. Mayor, um, on behalf of the chamber, I'm a board member. We'd love to work with y'all on any and all of your events. Okay. So I know there's been some uh, friendly competition, if you want to call it that, in the past. We really would like to see us work together better. And we've done a pretty substantial effort on that. Uh, for this year's Marvel Festival. So just just for the record, I'd like to tell you that we, we'd love to help out if uh, if we can figure out a way to do it. Yeah, our, our main goal for the Jackson Merchants Association is besides just trying to get business, uh, businesses and organizations to join us, is that we try to come up with ideas and bring events for the town for people to come out and be a part of it, enjoy it, have fun, you know, and stay here if they can. Um, we're the ones, I don't know if you guys know, but we're the ones that handle the Easter egg hunt every year. Um, we're the group that does the Main Street Nine of Lights Christmas Parade every year. Um, we do the trick-or-treating on Main Street. We handle it and help to get it going and organizing it. So, you know, we do, we do a lot um, to try to get the businesses involved. And we try to get the customers into their stores, too, to help stay, keep them in business. Because, you know, if one hand doesn't shake the other, you know, these businesses won't stay in business for long. But a few, few years ago, we... The city, uh, we built the stage and we started, and you can you, you can have the name Mania, but we came up with it and, right. and we put the put the stage in the middle of town and we hired bands and after about seven or eight, nine or ten of those, and because one of these events, the city employees are here till after midnight picking up, cleaning up, especially go past ten o'clock. You're talking about eight o'clock, that's appreciated. But it, what I'm getting at is. We actually felt we were harming uh, the, the businesses in town. What, not necessarily harming, but not having to the degree that we were having to provide fun and excitement for the, the guests. And I guess I kind of grew, grew tired of the manias when I came up and I saw where people had brought their children off and they were all over behind the courthouse and basically up to no good. They were not at the right. mania. They were just using the town to to get away from mom and dad. Right. And so that was, when I saw those antics, uh, that pretty much brought an end to the city's excitement about the mania on Main Street. But that was, we, but we had them so regular, it became a place for children to get to. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we were doing like three, three a year or something like that. And we were doing the car show. The we, we were doing the Main Street um, classic cruise ins every month, but like, Three per year, we were calling on the Main Street Manias. Okay, and that, so, that that's fine. You can you can have, you can have the name. Uh, and uh, then and the city was paying for the bands then, yeah. but but instead of you guys, um, I went to uh, Jeff and talked to Jeff and got him to actually pay. I come up and sponsor and pay the money for us to pay for the bands this year. Okay, uh, this but, but, but what we're getting at, you're going to have the band, you're going to have everything in place, 
The city's not going to have to worry about the flopping or not happening. You no. You're going to take care of all the advertising. Yes. Okay. Yeah, we we have, we'll handle everything. Um, we'll pay for the porta potty. Um, we'll have porta potty. We'll have, we'll have to have police officers here that night and yeah, firemen as well to block the street like we would for any other event. Mm -hmm. So well, that will be an expense to the city. And clean up after. And clean up after. Uh, and we're we'll, setting up prior to. Um, and after the event, we'll try to get the car club because we'll have several members here, and we'll get them to probably go with us, like we did when we had the uh, the American Legion here, and we'll walk one end of Main Street on both sides and go all the way down and pick the trash up and stuff like that. Sewer butt stuff. Um, the only thing we'd have to have the city do is you know pick up the trash cans, you know, the bags. With that, council, we have a motion. I'd like to motion to approve the downtown event on November the 4th with the Jackson Market Association. Motion to approve the event. Second. Motion and second. Discuss. Um, with the That's what you're supposed to say thank you. Thank you. <laughs> on, 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 on the flyer that we have now, I have um, a bill for the ability in the room that I can put the City of Jasper logo on there. Would you guys, would the council like to have their... Uh, we we would now follow our logo being on that, would the council? That way it shows that you're back in the room. Thank you guys so much. Okay. Greatly appreciate All it. All favor with your hands. Thank you. Right. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Alcohol special events license. Mr. Underwood. turned out nice it was good we didn't know what to expect we learned from it and every event after that been a learning experience so going into this year we're kind of preparing and getting some ideas and I had asked Sonny I said you know last year <coughs> on the uh, the day they shut the street down the big event we had a lot of traffic in and out of the front door not just from customers dining but then we had a lot of people that just were in and out getting beer and the front door was, that area just got so jammed up, plus people just using the restrooms. And, and we don't turn anybody away from using the restrooms. So if they're not eating, it matters. So one day, use the restrooms. To me, it's only good business, because people appreciate that, especially with young kids that have used the bathroom, come in and out. And so we were thinking of ways to keep the flow not so jammed up in front of the door a little bit. I asked somebody if it would be possible to get a keg trailer that event and um, just loosen up some of that traffic there and keep the flow a little easier for us with the door open and closing open and closing and eliminate some of that so that was pretty much my idea I didn't know if it was possible we could do it and, um, and so I went to Sunday and asked him if it might be possible and for, for that event and make things a little easier on us inside and uh, flow the traffic a little better and probably be a little easier um, for the people too at the event. So that was my idea of the whole thing. Uh, you made me study uh, since Sunday brought this to me and present this to the council at a workshop. And, and I was trying to get Bill up to speed. I apologize, Mr. Pickett. I didn't get the chance to get him on board with this until this afternoon. But uh, I'd like to open it up for discussion and, and see what the council says. And then we'll try to determine the legality of uh, what you're asking. Okay, well, I, I have, if, if, if don't mind, I had spoke with uh, just one of my distributors, the um, Eagle Rock distributor, which is the Anheuser Busch products, Budweiser and stuff. So um, <clears throat> there is a, um, a form they have me fill out, which I sent to my insurance man, so I get an insurance binder for the day too for for that part too. So I, that's part of it, and um, the other legalities. I'm not an attorney. Okay. Well, his, the thing about his building uh, is 
at the intersection of Stegall and Main. And that area, two years ago, Mr. Howell, being the owner of the restaurant at that time, moved the van to that area. And they, they, we recorded that off for them on the second night of the uh, Jeep Fest. And, and the second night turned out to be, uh, I think, fairly a large crowd as well. I did not attend, but I understand they had a large group. But that's, that is in a unique place as far as uh, having Stegall alleyway there that goes between his building and the Weeks Jewelers. Uh, just have you get that, I know you know where it's at, but just visualize that as it has some unique capability. Uh, Bill wants a little more time to look over this. I know and I gave it to him that would supersede. We may have to have a call meeting, meeting decision, we may not, but Bill's going to reserve the right to study this a little longer. Um, but I like to discuss the issues tonight that I perceive to be uh, things that, that's affected this council and its ability to distribute alcohol, whether it be wine, beer, or distilled spirits on Main Street. Uh, I know some council members are maybe a little more liberal in their thinking as to how it should be. And we may have some council members who think that it's, it's too, too liberal. Uh, it might need to be a little more conservative as to how we distribute uh, alcohol. How many? Speaking how many, of distributing, Mr. Fountain. How, how many special events do we consider that we actually have on downtown Main Street in a year? Five, I think. Jeep Fest, Marble Fest, Christmas Parade, New Year's Eve, and Fourth of July, right? Halloween. And Halloween. And <laughs> Six. Mr. Lowell, would you like to give them your definition of how Main Street is, is used? Long, long table. Long table. I often say we need to write an article of Main Street. Why do we have one? Isn't that wrong? <laughs> so he, he, tell, he tell me that after every event. So, uh, we yeah, do we'll close Main Street, Main Street a lot. People think we don't, but we, we do. But with that, the concern with alcohol outside your premise. Mm -hmm. Uh, is uh, a concern that might go against directly our ordinance unless we were to define this in a special event. Council, have you had a chance to look over this and think about this since Monday night? Thursday. 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 I guess, um, personally, I'm probably a little more on the liberal side of this type of thing. Having spent a few times or two in front of one of these trailers with beer <laughs> but, um, and now I can't hardly do that anymore but um, I do think it's um, a lot of the feedback we get from our um, constituents is that we don't do enough and again we, we probably need to start documenting what we actually do do so we can say well you know we did do quite a bit but I think it's one of those things that would would generate a lot of excitement and, um, and maybe some people would think it's the wrong kind of excitement you know, I, I, I don't know if we have time to do this before um, Jeep Fest. Um, this is our last week before that, I guess. Did, did we talk about that we would change the ordinance last time about alcohol ratio and then being able to get a permit because we talked about the... We talked about it, but I don't think we ever changed it, did we? We don't have anything specifically addressing a mm -hmm. beer wagon on Main Street. We've talked about crawls, we've talked about this, that, and the other. And we uh, have nothing specifically saying we can or we can't, except the fact that how you're supposed to keep your alcohol inside your facility, your building. And, and that's pretty much the catch-all. But a special event, and while the council makes the decision, this, this gives the mayor a lot of authority, but I would not step out here without the council behind me on any of this. Mayor, years ago, changed our ordinance to where you could have alcohol on the patio back years ago on the other side of the city, The city of Jasper, the city of Jasper was sued uh, for uh, our advertising ordinance for alcohol several years ago and we actually lost, we won locally but lost in the state Supreme Court because uh, we, we felt like you should not see any of the name brands inside the convenience stores or or beer signs outside because when our forefathers 
passed the sale of alcohol in the city of Jasper, the way they did that was convince all the citizens that if you vote for this, we're not going to look like the county line in Pickens County. We're going, to, you, we're going to make it against the law, against the city ordinances, county ordinances, that this is going to be hid from the children. We're not going to allow slits and Budweiser to be seen. And come to find out, the state looked at that differently. The state said that we, in Jasper, Georgia, are part of the United States, which has a constitution, and that alcohol is a legal product which I always thought he had a lot of restriction on it. I mean, you can't buy it to your certain age, and you can't do this, you can't do that, but they, they like this First Amendment, right, that you can, freedom of speech, and since it's, since it's legal, it's, you should be able to advertise it. So we lost that case with the Supreme Court. But uh, is that pretty much the case, Bill? Yeah, you, well, you argued it. I wanted to go with you and argue it, but they wouldn't let me. But, uh, Were they a special license? Covered. Special events. Uh, I think. I think. He has a Bill, I think if this council were to vote in this session to allow what this gentleman is asking for, that would make it legal, would it not? I think it would. Would supersede anything in this for one time event. So that's what we're asking for tonight. If I look at this, I'm going to say no. Mm -hmm. But this council can vote. And give you permission, and that's if the council wants to. We supersede this special event. I, I understand, and I understand your point too. Because when I did ask Sunny, I thought about it too. There's a lot of control that has to be brought about with serving that alcohol. And I being number one, okay, not over serving number two. And, I, and 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 when I came, I came from Cherokee County. And I had a business down there for probably 17 years, sold it about three or four years ago, and then we came up here to Jasper. And what I liked about Jasper, which is attractive to me, is, is it's more family. And I had a full bar down there, and, and I just and I had a very good business going and sold a perfectly good business because I got sick of the alcohol part of it, because you become a grown-up babysitter. Okay? And that just that was just not what I like. Beer and wine in a family atmosphere, it doesn't get out of control, and I don't let it get out of control. Now, um, and I understand that would be a big concern for all those people at Jeep Fest, and a lot of them are young, and they like to pound beers, and I understand that too. So there has to be a certain amount of control. And, other, and I know we're coming in late asking for it, but there were some other ideas that we thought about doing where and you don't you only allowed like like sell tickets for it, and you're only allowed so many tickets, so many beers, because you don't want a bunch of drunken people going up and down Main Street. So I don't either. I don't. And ultimately, I'm responsible for them too. This is also called a sheriff's jeep fest. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. We'll, so, have a few, we'll have a few officers there. Right. Yeah. But I, I will do everything right. in, in, in my power to make sure that it's controlled and it's not doesn't become a drunk fest. My, my that's own. what I don't want it to be. Believe me. My only concern, me personally, would be like if the Christmas parade and the Halloween is considered special events, I don't know why. Who would want to have beer trucks out for Christmas parade and Halloween? You know, the kids trick or treat on Halloween. And I don't know if that's. No, I, I don't think the beer wagon out in the middle of the night, that, all those stupid Halloween would be good. I mean, I guess it's a crazy question, but could this council, could this council set? The events that they can they pick and choose the events that they want the beer trucks out on, on the street. Well, pick, picking and choosing is picking and choosing becomes a, you hit the nail on the head. Well, we got to be careful picking and choosing. Just saying, no, but this council can approve this one and see how it works out or disapprove it, whichever you choose. I'm not going to shut down the street all right there between. I think I think we'd have to to make this work. Uh, you, that mean people. You, we're not going to use that part of the street anyway. To get in and out of traffic, we're going to close the whole main street, and jeeps will be lined up from one end to the other. And there's not much room for people. There's so many jeeps up there. That's a one way down, anyhow. So yeah. mm -hmm. you're right. You can't have act, you don't have access to it. Although a lot of people don't realize it's a one way down. <laughs> but we, 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 we would have to barricade it if people were to use it for this, and you'd have a lot of people there. Pardon? Once they put the so people couldn't see. So keep it all confined to that one spot. 
that that would mean that they like, you, you can put that in your motion if you like. Oh no, I'm if, asking. I'm if you were if you were to do that, my yes. Sir. Since we have legal counsel here, would it be would it be wrong of the counsel to ask our legal attorney here what his stance on what, what is your opinion? First of all, I, mean, I, I want you to a little more time to look at it, but whatever, whatever you decide to do, if you decide to do this, I think it ought to be designated in a certain spot, not just free reign. In other words, don't put it out in the middle of the street. Put it somewhere where you designate it to be, so it be in a confined area. And that way you can control it. Because so ultimately, ultimately it's going to be the chief of police that's going to have to do it in the fire department. And we don't want to uh, jeopardize anything that uh, any stability that they can give to the problem. What you were saying basically is that that alleyway would be an extension of his business, that that, that special event. The front of his business and that to and that, and that that seagull. Uh, that block of the seagull. Now, Bill, you know, the liability or something like that, since the streets belong to the city. Where, where is the. Uh, he just insures. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He just named this an insured, an additional insured on the insurance policy. That's what I just heard. Well, that, that's pretty much what the um, sales are from. And I, I don't see it, but I mean. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I think For that, that certain event you could name us as I think sure. that the city of Jasper gets named, besides myself, and Eagle Rock Distributors since it's their wagon on the street. I think that's the what the rider covers all three of us. And you don't have a paid employee there? Yeah, I will probably monitor the, the, the drafts and, and probably bring my daughter up for that day to work with, with me and my son in law. So uh, they're very responsible and so I have a little more control rather than just a hired not nothing against any of my higher employees, but I like this. I mean, if it's a first time event too, I don't want to. I want it to go right. Have you have you, have you done this before in Tricky County? No, I have not. No, because I like my restaurant that was in Cherokee County. Chief level, would you? We were inside a um, public shopping center. We did outside events in the parking lot, but nothing to where we were trail. When is the, uh, I assume the youth fest is our next big event coming up in September? Labor Day, Labor Day weekend. Yeah. First of September. Chief, um, <laughs> would you address the council on problems you perceive with this particular motion? I mean, uh, the, the problems are endless. It could be, but there could be no problem at all. I mean, it, it all depends on, I guess, the clientele and if it's monitored. Uh, it's definitely not against the law to drink in public unless you begin to stumble and then you become a pedestrian with influence and you become loud and boisterous and showing your tail to put it mildly and then we take you to jail for this sort of conduct or a pedestrian with influence or public drunk. There's a number of things. Since you're already public and if you're drunk, you'd be a public drunk. Wouldn't you? Exactly. <laughs> wouldn't take you long to get that way. <coughs> Jerry, you had a question? Uh, would it be appropriate for me to make a comment? If you would raise your hand, I recognize or you. Or Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Am I being recognized? Mm -hmm. You're recognized. Okay. Thank you. One, one thought that I had uh, while y'all were discussing this, uh, maybe give some consideration if you are going to do a motion, uh, and if that motion is going to set the stage for any other events after that and people wanting to do the same thing, perhaps what you may want to consider is either putting that this um, unit needs to be located within a certain number of feet of the business that has the license um, or something like that where it needs to be adjacent to it. So then, you know, a concern about somebody wanting to put it square in the middle of Main Street, that doesn't fit within the parameters because it has to be with an established business within X number of feet of that established business that is sponsoring it. So that was the only thought that I had while you were making those discussions. And uh, I wanted to offer that suggestion for whatever it's worth. Thank you. I, I had actually thought that first parking space when you turn on the goal closest to my restaurant would be the best place to put it. it either there or we're actually on. I, I had thought about that I put it on the <clears throat> sidewalk or right in front, but I don't know how well that would go with those pavers. 
But, but really, I thought that first parking spot. Uh, I, just, I, I think you can find it in, in the in that we're going to call it probably before it's over a beer garden, mm -hmm. where you're going to keep the people and you're going to hand it to them. You're going to say you can't be walking around with this, or you if you stumble, you're liable to be arrested. So, and I'm sure people will probably try to sneak out with it. This thing, but some effort to maintain them in that would be, I think, appropriate. That would be then. Then what we actually could do is put, put some tables. Uh, yeah, on the front food. and on that front like patio part in front of the store. Would it out there and then rope it off to the beer wagon to where uh, yeah, they couldn't get out of that area. If the council sees fit, I think that would be something we had to include the front of your store over to the opposite side of uh, Seagull down to the back of that block. Could we block off Seagull from the front of? From Main Street down to where sure. I was. We're going to do that anyway. Put tables and say. Let me check this over. I think I'm good now. I mean, I, I'm, not, I'm not like. I wouldn't even know. It's a first time event. So I'll back up on my bottle sales, mm -hmm. obviously. Yeah. And, uh, Could. Take control of that. Yeah. 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 So I'm, I'm just going to have to discuss that with the Budweiser rep. But I'm sure he'll shoot high. <laughs> okay, but uh, if the council, if the council feels, but I, as if they would like to move forward with this, you can vote in the affirmative and leave it to myself and the city attorney to do the things that the council will indicate that they want, where the beer wagon will be, how it will be roped off, and the, this will be an agreement signed before we give the final permit to move forward with it that would meet any requirements that you want to list in your motion. Make it, Just give uh, you that option. Certainly, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want any vote. Uh, I'd, I'd vote for it. It'd be dependent on, on Bill's uh, evaluation of that hold harmless. I can, and the insurance policy. Hold harmless and insurance. I would say this from your question, how many checks that uh, on our first year going into this, we heard so many <coughs> stories of the prior owner of how many cases of beer he bought and how many cases of beer he sold and there's a lot of rumors flying but it really wasn't a lot of beer and we we when i talked to all three of my beer distributors they all told me this this we took a lot of beer back from them because we just over ordered so much so I, I didn't go crazy on beer ordering and i didn't run out on beer i i, I ordered more than i would think that I would have to when I was starting just guessing a uh, regular week, no, but I didn't run out and I didn't have the over amount of stock that really killed me either. So I, I don't think it's a big beer fest for most of the people that come. So, so I don't know. Limit, the time is like 6 to 10 or something? What's the well, time we, we, we could, well, we could limit it to whatever. We, we're usually closed by 9.30 and I don't even I think it was an early crowd Jeep Fest night too. I don't think it was too late to win, but Chief, what time do they normally pull out the Jeep Fest? They they leave early, they do the show and shine, they see it, and they start peeling out and we start pulling them out of there. But yeah. uh, well that's mainly because they have nothing to drink. So <laughs> Well, and then they, but the next day is all the festivities. Mm -hmm. Yes. That, and they well, I guess they want to get up early and down to the uh, Jeep Fest crowns for that too. Yeah. So, uh, with so with this, I think you made a fine present. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's Friday that yeah, I think you made a fine presentation, and uh, I'd like for the council, one of the council members, to make a motion, and we will try to find that motion, assist in that council member as best we can, if it's affirmative or in the negative. Uh, I make a motion we approve the uh, application uh, for special uh, event uh, concerning liquor sales, and uh, give the city manager and uh, city attorney authority to uh, uh, regulate uh, the event. Okay. Have a motion uh, to a particular interest, that we've already mentioned that it doesn't need to be in the motion, but it needs to be in discussions, insurance, and um, uh, just legal issues. Okay. Uh, I hope there's nothing on the state ordinance or, or city ordinance that just caught a block. Motion to approve with stipulations to be regulated by the mayor and city attorney. Second. By motion second. Discussion. 
I'd like to see a, a bear similar to what we did with the, uh, the See crust, like right? some kind of a barrier. Keep them all isolated in that one spot. Make it an extension of the store. I think we can do that. More than just a road bike, mm -hmm. that's what John's saying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's, and I think we could get that accomplished pretty much. I mean, I'll probably yeah. do something like that, maybe an event tent. Yeah, yeah there's barriers too that you can do. Yeah. You know, right, section of fence that you can run. I know that the Mexican restaurant that was next to me down in uh, Canton, he would have this single to mind. He put extra fencing and extend his patio area just for that same reason. So it's, and uh, yeah, that's that's not hard to do at all. We can accomplish that. And then like I said, oh, uh, Mr. Piggy, if you just let me know when I do the waiver for this insurance, I would think, I don't know what, the liability amount has to be on it. We're in good like that too. So I think that's something we, I'm going to talk to my insurance man about too, and the guy from Budweiser. You know, for, for that should be. Any further discussion? Being done, all favor of a show of hands. Three, four, five. Thank you. Good luck with this, and we'll work with you. Good luck. And uh, thank you very much. As I was reading this, I didn't give you much hope, and I'm looking forward to making this work for you. Which, <laughs> thank you. Uh, listen, so am I, because uh, I don't want it to explode in my face either. Well, <laughs> let, let, it be known, let, it be, let it be known we're not totally anti-business in general. No, I, I don't think, I, I actually think any city that shuts Main Street down six times a year is, <laughs> is pretty business friendly. Uh, yeah, that's my I, think, I think Greg thinks we open at 300 <laughs> Well, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Item C, list station pump, Mr. Hall. All right. Even the mayor of council. Uh, Lisa put a sheet. And we always know look, I think, about the location, uh, Liberty Lane location, retirement. And I've got an error right off the bat on the top of the second bid did come out, come in on the check valves, on the check valve pit. And I was going to let y'all know that four line come in, and whenever they come in, uh, we have noticed that. HC Supply had not included in their accessory kits. So when we got both of them to where the bids were the same on both of them, HC Supply was at $11,875. And for the line was $11,715.51. So for the line actually come in $100, a little $100 cheaper on the check valve pit for the station. Uh, at Liberty Lane, uh, which is A, which is replaced by the check the discharge bid. Yeah. So both it's, distributors, David, is uh, bidding on the same equipment, same yes, materials. So yes. Both exactly. handle, no labor involved. All labor is going to be our, our labor. labor. So yes. They just bid the material. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes. And that is the two bids that we received and four line was. Uh, and we bought from both of these distributors before. Yes. So yes. either one does well, a good job. What was four line again? Four line was eleven thousand seven hundred and fifteen dollars and fifty one cents. I'm not sure Tony yeah, has got any bills with eleven thousand eight hundred seventy five. Both of these companies too. I'm sure Cherokee County deals with both of these companies also. Damn, does that include shipping? Yes. Yes, that's on site. Um, uh, them assisting uh, with a boom truck to set the check out the yeah, also. Uh, that's I mean, we'll be doing this all, and we'll we'll have the old check out get took loose out and out of the way and ready to set the other one in. Um, should be able to do both in one day. Uh, we'll have to hopefully check hauling for that day and have some of the local haulers uh, doing some hunting for us in a couple areas to be able to do this. But it's vital that we do it. This this station is. Uh, We've patched it all we can. It's just enough. So you're recommending the low bid? Yes, Corbin. Yes. yes. What, what, what we're talking about doing right here, David, I mean, we discussed this briefly before the council meeting. 
this this is not going to be a bad thing. This 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 should fix the problem yes. for, for quite a while. Yes, this is going to take us toward the future. It's been about 15 years there. In those 15 years, this station's been there. Uh, it's been problems on and off with it, as we discussed in the workshop. Uh, it was supposed to go into the middle school lift station, uh, Pickens County Middle School. That didn't work out between the city and the school, so we had to pump it on to the plant. And by doing adding that to it, it's put more burden on it than it can handle. With what we're looking at tonight, this is going to take it to where it's supposed to be, the right pumps and uh, new check valves. Whatever, uh, check valves are just worn out and they're, they're old. And that's where they suggested those be able to place also. Both companies did. What's the normal life on those check valves? Do we need to start looking at some kind of maintenance schedule? Probably, you know, 10, 12 years you're looking at. Them. And most of them are not this big. This is our biggest lift station. This is the 88 quarter mile lift station. Most of our pump stations and also two of the design out. of this uh, check out that whenever they build it, they, there's no room. You can't get an iron hole on a little mount and work on it. So this new you know, pit will be big enough to where you can do maintenance on it. This pit that's right now is not big enough to actually do maintenance on it. You can't get an iron place. You're going to have to destroy the pit to work on any of it. So that's why, but the new pit that we're installing, you'll have room to work on when necessary. In fact, so, one of the there. options that they did explore was the addition of a, another station closer to the uh, uh, well, closer to the treatment mm -hmm. uh, plant, and that was that was ruled as not not a good option. No, you have a motion. Oh, let's get a motion so we discuss this. I'll make a motion to take the low bidder. A motion to approve the low bidder. Second. Second. Motion second. Discussion? Amen. Well, my question was where we're going to, where, how we're going to do this. You have money in your we, we have a small, we have about $23,000 left. Left on the uh, But, I mean, with the motor in the check valve, that's going to exceed that. Um, but I can say with this new station being able to pump excess, it's going to help us on a leach aid. We'll be able to go. We were on four loads. We went up to five. We went back down to four. But hopefully, with this, we can go up to six or seven loads a day because we'll have a more dependable station to go to. It goes from uh, what I call Dallas Lift Station across the road. It used to be Dallas Tractor. I'm not sure. It's a church now. And we should we should be able to pump there another year before they run us off. Yes. Yes. And this station and. So what me and Mary were talking about the other day is with Bethany Morins and the future growth that's supposed to happen down there, these stations are going to be vital. This is part of the project when the city got the sewer from the racetrack all the way back to town. This is the last one that it goes to before you know, going into the plant. Okay. And it actually goes on part goes into the pond and then we trickle it into the plant. We don't take the check. And not putting words in David's mouth, but we have no choice but to prepare this. This thing is subject to a leak, and the fines would be <clears throat> astronomical compared to what we're spending. So, uh, there's, we have, if we're going to be in the sewer business here, we've got to pump. So, uh, but we do like to get the lowest price, and, and I think we have that for this. Now, you have the pump still here as well. But we, any further discussion on the uh, replacement of the valves and the check valves and the discharge pit? Being done, all of everybody with a show of hands. Thank you, Council. David, you're still up. You're still costless. Okay, on B, who's replaced number one uh, pump, which is 88 horsepower, got 200 gallon in it, that 280 feet ahead with the new pump. Will, it will pump 250 to 300 gallon per minute at 280 feet ahead. And they're all. Uh, <coughs> suggesting that we go to a higher RPM motor to do this and that way we don't have to replace uh, the whole panel box and everything there also. You can go with a higher RPM and not have to go up in horsepower. So that will allow us to stay with our same uh, pit and same pit and the control panel that we have and not have to go, you know, spend probably fifty to sixty thousand on a new panel. And you're, so you're looking at number one, 
Yes, it is uh, flat in Swanee, Georgia. Was the low bid, 72 horsepower, 3550 RPM pump at 38,400. Uh, Atlanta Amtec, it's a Moody pump, 80 horsepower, 3550, 39,400. But even though there's a difference in horsepower, they both pump almost exactly the same on their pump curve. Uh, we tried to obtain bids from Gain Gainesville James Electric, did not receive one. Tried to uh, get one from Cleveland, Georgia, Pro Pumps, did not receive one. Okay. We, you you don't use flight a lot, right? Yes. Yes, it's uh, A A through the year on flight. Is that a motion? How much must we go with the uh, low bill is uh, this is uh, 38,400. No motion, any second? Second. No motion, second. Any discussion? And where is this in the budget? This is going to be to come out of the sewer. It's going to take us over. Any that I didn't anticipate this conversation going down this year. So, I mean, it's not something that we budgeted or, you know, foreseen to happen this year. So, I mean, it's probably going to take us over. For repairs and maintenance. Yeah. So we probably have to bleed something else off. We should still be able to bring them in under budget. Yeah, well, there's several projects that we're not probably going to get to this year that I have budgeted for. Okay. Um, the sewer plan for the sewer plan is We 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 don't have specifics in our budget for <coughs> pumps go out. But we do have maintenance, and we have projects that uh, we probably won't get to just in case we have something like this. And we may even have another pump go up for this year, though. So, uh, but I believe we're still in good stead. Yeah, and, and I'll probably capitalize this. You know, it, it won't hit the, the income statement, it'll hit the <coughs> so okay. it won't really affect the, the revenue. The expense. Get a big order more if they could show that my office was handing his hands and so. Yeah, we're the biggest expense. This is our bigger pump station. I mean, this is one that, you know, if it turns up, it's, you know, most of the time it's a three to four thousand dollar rebuild or something like that at a 30 or 40 thousand or 30 or 40 horsepower station. This is, uh, this is definitely this is, our biggest. This is thing. part of doing business. Any other discussion? For 30 business. <laughs> then I'll have a show of hand. Thank you, Council. It's unanimous. Thank you, David. Thank you. This report's mine, but Lonnie, come up and hold my hand with this. Dixie Street uh, extension. The other day, uh, I uh, received a common phone call, I think, from Greg Lovell, asking me to come over to the police department to meet with the new school superintendent, Carlton Wilson. So we get over there and we talk about everything from uh, the wrestling program, cheerleading, the use of the gym, and uh, before it's over, we were talking about changing dig all one way and and uh, oh by the way uh, the count the board of education wants to give the street back to the city known as Dixie Street I call it Dixie Street extension uh, Lonnie did for me today he read my mind and went out and got a letter from Carlton Wilson says the Pickens County School System is requesting the Dixie Street extension connecting Stegall Drive to DP Carroll Street be reopened as an operational city street and what we'll have to do is go in there, blade off the uh, the landscaping that the school board put in years ago. And the reason they wanted it back, Mr. Wood was superintendent, was so that they could use that for part of the playground to go over to the gym and not have the traffic uh, danger for the children. But now that'll be blocked off and there will be no children crossing the street there during the day. And they're going to use it for... <coughs> tech support and, and storage and with that uh, we'll get into the report in a few minutes from John talking about what the of the rest of the program but with that that would give us our street back the school board would be happy and I believe the citizens of Jasper would be happy when they try to get out of that area they're not going to go back into a bottleneck they can go in at least to another bottleneck somewhere else 
So we'll entertain a motion. Thank you, Lonnie, for all that help. We'll entertain a motion. <laughs> motion we uh, take back uh, uh, Dixie Street extension uh, between uh, Jasper Elementary and the gymnasium. Okay, we've got a motion to take back the offer of Dixie Street uh, from the Board of Education. Second. That motion is second. Discussion. Is that to be included in our next bid uh, for paving so that we can upgrade? Yeah. Our, our yeah, well, it wasn't on the list that we uh, we can add it. I mean, if we're prepared. We're going to do Dixie Street along with the, in the next bid. And it Steve, the Steve off, is it not next? No, it was in the spring. Okay. Right. I mean, we can add it. Uh, the bid package has not been let out yet. I would so, suggest we go ahead. So we can we add into it again. Yeah, uncovered, it's not going to be good. Right. One thing we can add to is also, Bill here, we need to make sure that we do this legally, get with Mr. Landrum with the board. I think he's still the school board attorney. And see what we did legally to flip flop that. They may have never changed the name on it. I don't recall any paperwork, but it's been years ago, so there might have been. But what we'll do is that's going to probably be a fall project that the school will get squared away and we'll go in there and, and put our equipment to the use. Take that out. All that dirt. Are they going to take it back? If they put it in there, are they going to take the dirt out? No, we will That makes sense. That's going to be my question. We, we can't. That's very nice. Well, that's one really of my question. How much is it going to cost the city to turn that back into a traffic street? Well, so it's pretty much from. They're not going to clean it off for us. I can assure you that. <laughs> what will it cost us to do it? Uh, I believe we'll be able to do it with our own manpower. Probably you won't see a spike in the budget whatsoever. It'll be uh, inside the street department operation. Okay. Okay. Uh, Mr. Landrum, we're going to have to take a vote on this. Okay. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
and uh, uh, we sent out two bid packages, but only one replied, and the total amount was forty-four thousand dollars to make the necessary repairs to open the bridge back up, plus the repairs that they recommended that we fix uh, that could create problem in the future. And there was about uh, six items of that, and so. The only bid we have is forty-four thousand. That didn't include the rip wrap underneath it. No, no, we did that out for ourselves. We talked about city uh, forces doing that. Did, did this company that recommended the dollar to give you this dollar figure? Did they tell you how long they cost that to get the bridge up to to we had to do any more repairs? Did they give you? A, they just the only comment that was made by the gentleman that came from Illinois down here to inspect it is he said that after this was done, the bridge should be good for quite a while. That's all he stated. And we will be able to use uh, it's possibly mm -hmm. I thought it was not, that's not uh, a uh, well, we'll, 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 we'll be able to use the splash. Yes, well, we will pay for this with the splash money that we'll pay to the road with doing all the transportation. Entertain a motion. Move we approve the uh, repair of the wood bridge. Motion to approve the repair of the wood bridge for a cost of forty-four thousand. What name of the company again? You don't hate the pack. We like, like to, we like to have that for the record. Second. Second. And a motion is set. Okay, on the discussion, my question is: How are we looking on splash money? I mean, are we going to over exceed our bounds? Let's just say everything, cash we've got in the bank now, plus what we've, we've not paid, but we're going to pay in the next couple weeks probably. But right now, with all that taken out what's committed, we've got about 331000 in there. And I, I don't know what the next paying job is going to cost, you know, that y'all are planning this. this that. We're going to try to speculate and estimate how much we have left versus we like to leave a little in the fund for the springtime because we'll have six months before we start the next project. Uh, but this forty-four thousand is going to knock us down below three hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. uh, so we'll start trying to build. But we'll pay what we collect, and, and we've only have to eliminate a couple of roads we anticipate for the bid process. And now some of the main streets that we have listed will be out of the meeting also. We got you know, to get a little big money, so we yes, have to so part of those streets will be out of the meeting. 77, this includes one where I can remember the Oh, you do have the Lemigo in this account, yeah. Is that okay? That's one of the streets. We've got a road. Well, we, we've got a white flag. We're trying to stay in the road, but. Uh, uh, where are we in the third year? Third. Starting from June, June, July 14th. The contractor's name will be Railworks Track Systems Incorporated. Okay, make sure Lisa gets that for a minute. Railwork Track Systems Incorporated. Any further discussion? Any other discussion? Being done on favor, but we show a hand. Thank you, Council. Uh, lease resolution. Item G, Lisa. Let me get it out here. Uh, this should, a copy of this is in your packet, but, uh, and the GMA mm -hmm. loan has closed. Uh, they watched our minutes and said that, that was enough. That I don't have to have this signed, but I always do get this lease resolution signed and have the council approve it. So um, I'm going to read it, and so I'll have it in our in our records. Um, ordinance for resolution for supplemental leases. This is a resolution ordinance to authorize and direct an officer of the city to execute one or more lease supplements for a lease or leases under the GMA Direct Leasing Program to designate such leases as qualified tax exempt obligations to provide an effective date and for other purposes. 
whereas the city has entered into a master lease uh, dated as of June 2, 2002 with Georgia Municipal Association Incorporated for the leasing from time to time of certain equipment, machinery, or other personal property pursuant to supplemental leases. Now therefore be it resolved or ordained as follows by the governing body of the city. The mayor of the city is hereby authorized and directed to execute and deliver a lease supplement pursuant to the master lease to put into effect one or more leases for various vehicles, fire, public works, equipment, the lease property. Said officer of the city is authorized and directed in the name and on behalf of the city to execute and deliver I one or more lease one one or more lease supplements for items of the lease property in substantially the form attached to the master lease with such changes and additions as may be approved by said officer and two such other documents as may be deemed by such officer to be necessary or desirable to affect the purposes hereof or of the master lease and such execution shall constitute conclusive evidence that the executed document has been authorized and approved hereby the, the aforesaid officer is further authorized to do all things necessary or appropriate to effectuate the purposes hereof. Uh, number two, an appropriation in the city's current and operating <coughs> budget has previously been made which shall be sufficient to pay the rentals and the termination payment during the starting term under such lease supplements. Uh, number three, the lease or leases contemplated by the said lease supplements are hereby designated qualified tax exempt obligations within the meaning of section 265b3 of the Internal Revenue Code of 1986 as amended and said officer shall be authorized to confirm such de designation by execution of the appropriate documents in connection therewith. Number four, this authorization shall be effective immediately. Entertain a motion to approve the resolution. So moved. Motion to approve. Second. Second. Motion and second. Discussion. What's all that mean? <laughs> Maybe we just borrowed a lot of money. We're hoping Bill Duff can tell us if we ever need to know. Mm -hmm. Any further discussion? Looks like a line of credit. That's what. Yeah. Yeah. We. Uh, we will pay for most of the equipment already out of our we pay for a lot of it. We're, funds. We're going to get our money back. We're currently trying to get the draw off it now. We're working on that. Okay. Any other discussion? I forgot this was a 2002 lease originally. Master lease dated uh, July 2nd, 2002. Any other discussion? That's when we bought all the other for the first time. That's how we do it. All favor of a show of hands. Thank you, Council. Mr. Nathan McCall. Well, thank you, Mayor and Council. I'm pleased to be with you this evening. What I wanted to focus on very quickly was some of the um, entertainment industry activity that's taken place over the past several weeks. Um, the weekend before last, we had a Savannah College of Arts and Design graduate student uh, feel pretty extensively over the weekend out at the Code property. This is a class project, but it also will be submitted to the uh, independent film circuit. Um, of the about an hour and a half movie, about 30 minutes of it will be featuring the footage that they took out at the Cove, and the city of Jasper will also feature very prominently in their credits. So this will give us uh, some exposure, hopefully the film will do well. The basic storyline is some young people get lost in the wilderness, and some other people try to find them, and a lot of other stuff happens. Uh, the other thing I want to share is this weekend we had a Uber commercial filming on Allred Mill Road. And uh, the Sheriff's Department worked with them providing protection. Uh, they also utilized some drones and some other things during the filming, and it attracted a good bit of attention. Uh, the last thing I want to share, and this is probably the, really the best, uh, we've had this independent company out of Los Angeles that has come to the community probably three times over the past two to three years, and they want to do a project that you film pretty much exclusively in Pickens County, the city of Jasper. 
Uh, it appears that they now have secured their funding. Uh, they came out about two months ago. They had a new producer with them, and they're anticipating starting in October. Something like this is where we can get a, a true economic return out of it because the crew will be staying here. They'll be buying things here. They'll be buying food here and, uh, and hiring people to build things as well as act as extras. So that's pretty exciting. Again, things around town will feature very prominently. The city of Jasper, Pickens County will feature very prominently in the credits. And, uh, and hopefully we'll get some return out of it. And you can see what the Tom Cruise did, movie did for Baldwin. I mean, tons of people were made aware of Baldwin because of that. So I think this is a great opportunity. And that's what I have to share this evening, unless there's any questions uh, about this or anything else. Jerry, how are we looking for business around the area? Do you see a lot more new business coming in, industry or retail? Well, the, the industrial opportunities we have right now, have uh, they haven't progressed and they haven't gone away. So that's been a little, I'll call it a little bit flat. Uh, other areas, I think we're seeing a great deal of activity. We recently had a ribbon cutting out at the, uh, at the new senior center that's coming up. I think that's going to spur a lot of other activity around there. Uh, there's been a couple other projects that have started to move forward. So I think on the commercial and retail sides, we're starting to see some decent activity for a community of our size. Any other questions? Thank you, Chair. Lisa, financial report. In your packet, you've got my finance report for July. Um, we collected uh, $95,739 in sales tax revenue. Uh, year to date, that's $654,768 compared to $607,093 last year. Uh, and so far, we're staying below our budget uh, at, at this time, at this point in time in the year. Um, and I've already given you our squash ca cash number. So, um, in the water fund, we're below budget. We're at 55 percent. We're with, we should be at 58 percent at this time. I didn't have a whole lot to go over and working on the loan and trying to get our money back in the bank for the, from that. Okay, hey, Scott, it's getting time to start thinking about the budget. Yeah. So we'll be notifying everyone and meeting with our staff and trying to come up with a plan for 2018. Thank you. Uh, Questions? Has there been any. Uh, Discussions with uh, our health insurance provider about what we can expect, what we can do about the potential increases in health care. We won't get those numbers until after the first of the year. Yeah, mm -hmm. they, they can't really tell us anything early. Uh, we can meet with him and see what he's feeling. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's April, right? When that rolls around. What are y'all seeing in your yeah. business? It's going up. Yeah. Way up. Mine's not a very good barometer. Mine's not a very good barometer. Uh -huh. As a state employee. Give me a statement. Well, we'll call Bidwell and uh, see what he can do. Let's discuss uh, what what are the potential savings. See if we can identify ways of uh, decreasing cost. You know, an opportunity presented itself right before our meeting last time. And it was really kind of too late to even explore it. Um, it it's kind of the way it hits you every year. It's just a we, weird we, situation. Reach out to. Well, we have to have a July, a July fiscal year to make this thing work for us. Um, June or July, whatever the year begins. Following. Well, let's find out what we can do to make it work for us. I've been watching Fox News uh, and CNN, so it don't look good. No. I don't think we're going to pull any rabbits out of the hat between now and this year. I'm not sure if there's going to be anybody in business for the insurance. Whether well, it's one station talk. Uh, animal control and other lot. Very <coughs> okay. 
capital that you can see has just had five animal calls from the last month. One of them being a raccoon in City Hall, and the other being a bear at Piney Woods. The others are just stray dogs running around. So. I think he came by this morning, too. I did. <laughs> Coming by pretty regular at Piney Woods. We got a lot of garbage. We got a bear on the river. Maybe yeah. talk to him about staying off Ridgewood. <laughs> I said it's Piney Wood. Hey, oh, thank you, Garvey. Thank you, Garvey. Do it with Piney Wood. I'll stop it, bud. Hey, the Garvey turned on Piney Wood, I'm sure. Hey, Mayor. Yes. The water treatment operator for that for singing. Is he good, Sean? He, he, yes. The well, water treatment operator, I still go see him at the fence the other day. Wow. Go look at the corner of my fence around my track. That's the system, so it's good. Anything else? Thank you. Please report, Chief Lowe. <clears throat> Good evening, Mayor and Council. Jasper Police Department for the month of July responded to 821 calls for service from the 911 Center, responded to 43 motor vehicle accidents. This year, total 37. Citations for following one DUI, seven speeding, one foul of strength, three shoplifting, one reckless driving, one unfair motor, 22 miscellaneous violations, one suspended or revoked. Georgia State Patrol issued total 144 citations for a grand total in the city court, 181. Total 33 state warrants were taken for following two simple battery misdemeanor, one simple assault, one family violence, battery, two counts of false swearing, two counts of false court crime. Three false statements, eight warrants for theft by conversion, two criminal trespass, one stalking, one terroristic threat, two obstructions, two disorderly conduct, contributing to limits of the minor, one theft by taking, one possession of methamphetamine, one cruelty, cruelty to children, one over detainer, one driving while license or suspended. This latest call is responding to 44 home calls, 25 disorderly calls, 11 harassment calls, seven trespass and ordering. 85 suspicious activity calls and 25 domestic investigated on a burglary. Questions, Councilman? Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Busy look. Chief Rowe. Good evening, Mayor, Councilman. City Fire Department responded to 101 calls. Those were no structure fires inside or out, no vehicle fires in or out, no grass fires in or out, eight motor vehicle accidents with injuries inside the city, five outside, 49 emergency medical responses in, 32 out, five other calls inside, two outside. As of the end of the month, there was 871 calls. Fire inspection program was the preset plan for construction and conducted 17 inspections. Thank you, Chief. Questions? Thank you. How did the roof project go? Barn is done. The uh, roof of the fire station is behind the <coughs> fire station. I started to do that. Barn is completely done. Thank you, Chief. John, up there on JYS Day? Uh, football and cheerleading. <coughs> Going along good, getting ready for the new season. It'll be pretty exciting. They're uh, in the more of a 515 uh, highway type league now versus having to ride to Jefferson and Rayburn and all like that. So, right. so it's going to help. Numbers are up, which is a good sign. Uh, also, too, is, is we know that the school is taking back to the gym, but the, the good thing is that Carlton will work with the kids knowing this is. His kids too, since they all in the school, so he's able to work with us well, and it's going to end up being, I think, a good thing for both the county and for the school. Last comment on that, Mr. Wilson, when he called me, uh, wanted to make an appointment to meet with me, and and we actually didn't make an appointment; we just met. And I told him it was really nice just to meet with somebody without having to make three appointments. I'm not knocking past administration from the school system, but he was breath of fresh air, and he told me that. Uh, uh, I said, what are we going to do with this wrestling program and, so, and cheerleading? He said, 
why don't we kind of incorporate it and let them work within our system and have actually buildings with air conditioning in them. And I think y'all got pretty excited about the possibilities for that. Well, I think it's going to be positive because a lot of the kids are already, their brothers and sisters are already there. And it's just, it's going to be convenient for the parents. I think it's going to be a good thing. And then it's also going to help us benefit the kids. Where is the wrestling going to be? Wrestling's going to be at the old gym at the high school. It's not air conditioned, is it? Oh, yeah. It's air conditioned. Their, their old gym is nice as anything. No, no. I, I, I'm talking about the old high school. Yeah, I'm talking about the high school. Oh, you're going to be there. You're going to have space. Uh, what time will you start practice? They should start after August 1st. Like what time of the evening? Oh, they'll start after 7. After the school events are, which is still works out good for the parents. Mm -hmm. It still gets them off on time of the but the school's covering the power and all this for you to do these things. That's, that's pretty good. Well, there, folks, we're going to be able to provide. We bought two brand new mats that are state of the art. So they're going to get 42 for 42 mats, which is And they will, awesome. use, they will use them also? They will use them also. It's to their advantage. And then uh, we're starting volleyball for girls. Uh, so we're going to buy the nets and all the stuff to do it. And so That's big. And that's going to help the girls at the middle school. And then the cheerleading is going to be over at JMS, and that's going to help benefit their program. So it's only going to benefit everybody. Okay, uh, our uh, golf tournament was a success. Lisa, did you have me some numbers? I don't know if you have them with you or not. Not the net. Yes, we if you would. Around 9,000. So we should be right there, right to a check. Probably 8,500. We'll have to keep a little, go up a seat for the next year. So. Well, you'll, you'll go write a check for JOSA, which is a lot of folks. It takes a lot of people and a lot of time and a lot of effort. Just repurpose your heavens cost how much? Well, this year we're having to get new ones. Oh, really? Uh, they, they cycle out. And with all the new concussion stuff and everything, we're, we're trying to keep up. We're, it takes a lot to make that happen. So, and also, too, if you've noticed, if you don't see us beating the doors down, it's all done through the JOSA board, most of our phone registers. Now, we'll have, a, you know, we'll have a raffle every now and then. But you don't see it's just constantly beating the doors down because we're able to make our budgets work a budget, make a business case, and make it work. And we just have to be able to do that. Is your board staying pretty consistent? Pretty consistent. I think just a little bit of turnover this last year, but not a whole lot. Right. Thank you. Council, I have no other business coming before this council. We have a motion. Move to adjourn.